I'm in the uh, upstairs area here of the museum and we're talking about mammals, giant panda and other bears. The giant panda is quite special among carnivora due to its distinct habits of feeding on bamboo. It's been therefore either classified as a separate family for a long time or regarded as a close relative of the red panda or raccoon. However, some systematicists consider that it's only a highly specialized bear and should be classified with the Ursidae, for which the discovery of the Olera arctis, once thought to be a type of Ursavis, presented strong and cogent fossil evidence. Hmm. Is that the polar bear? Olera arctis? In order to digest the bamboo effectively, the giant panda successfully develops a series of adaptive features such as false thumbs, which enable panda to grasp the bamboo, reduced carnassials and square-built molars. Olora arctis demonstrates similar teeth and is therefore considered as an ancestral form of the giant panda. With the exception of the giant panda, other ursids are mainly omnivorous, except the polar bear and include brown bear, black bear, sloth bear, and their allies. They widely distribute across Eurasia and America, even dispersed to Africa in geologic age. Let's see. Ancestral carnivores, procidentae, ursidentae. So you have brown bear, polar bear, Asiatic black bear, American black bear, sun bear, sloth bear, spectacled bear, giant panda, raccoon, and lesser panda. The red panda, the lesser panda, is more closely related to a raccoon skunk line of stuff, the procidentae, huh? Then it is to a Black and white giant panda there. I think they're cuter. I like the red panda better than the giant black pandas. Every time I go to a zoo, I'm like, these giant pandas are boring and not doing nothing, and the little red pandas doing all curious, cute stuff. But they both eat bamboo. Scavengers on the grassland. Hyenas, huh? We're in carnivore territory now. Feral and fatal predators. Carnivorans are an order of placental mammals. They are mostly meat eaters, except for omnivorous bears, vegetarian giant pandas, and a few other species, and thus named. To adapt to such a diet, they develop a pair of iconic carnassials, i.e. two blade-like teeth with cutting edge, namely the fourth upper premolar and the first lower molar, which occlude with each other like a scissor for shearing hide and meat. In addition, sharp canines and claws are their powerful weapons for catching and killing prey. The size of carnivorans ranges from less than 10 centimeters up to 7 meters. For example, the least weasel and the southern elephant seal. Carnivorans first evolved in North America from members of the family Mycidae. During the Middle Eocene, they gradually split into the cat-like and dog-like forms, Feliforma and Caniforma, in the late Eocene. Feliforma includes lions, tigers, and hyenas, etc., the caniformia, dog, bear, and marine pinnipeds, etc. There are fewer than 300 living species distributed all over the world. Saber-toothed cat. Saber-toothed cat. A group of extinct large felids first appeared in the middle of the Miocene and disappeared in the late Pleistocene. They were ferocious and muscular, as living tigers or lions, but quite different in their upper canines. Long, curved, and thin with sharp ridge like a dirk or scimitar, and thus got their popular name. They ruled the prehistoric animal kingdom for almost 15 million years as top predators. The saber-toothed cats and the living felids both stem from the pro of the Oligocene, but diverged in the middle Miocene, uh, Miocene, and then evolved into two clans, namely the Macario Dantene and the Filinae. The former radiated dramatically in the late Miocene and Pliocene and dispersed all over the world except Oceania and Antarctica. And Antarctica. Finally, they evolved in all kinds of saber toothed cats in different size and appearance, such as Homotherium, Megatarian, and Smilodon. Smilodon is the one we have in California at the tar pits. Mammals with long trunks and tusks, proboscideans, elephants are famous for their long, strong, agile trunks and thus got the name, but primitive members lack prominent trunk. They are also known for their sturdy body and large head, shortened neck, and elongated tusks. 
They represent the second largest land mammal in prehistoric time, only smaller than the giant rhinoceros. Most of the primitive group have four tusks, long mandibles, and bunodont or brachiodont lophodont cheek teeth. Advanced groups have only two upper tusks, shortened mandibles, and hypsodont lophodont teeth. Proboscideans originated in North Africa, then migrated out of Africa 24 million years ago and dispersed quickly through Eurasia and American continents. They were once diversified but now have only three living species in two genera. Until 10,000 years ago, elephants were diversified and distributed throughout China. China was the central zone of the evolution and migration of elephants with numerous fossils such as Prodinotherium, Zygolophodon, Gomphotherium, Stegodon, Paleooloxodonta, Elaphus, and Mammothus. This one looks like a... Stegodon Zadansky Hopwood. Fossil elephant made in Chinese elementary school textbook nicknamed Yellow River Elephant. 1973, a nearly complete skeleton was discovered at Heishui Gansu. It was identified as a new species, Stegodon Huangoensis, by scientists from the IVPP, nicknamed the Yellow River Elephant. Later, the species was revised as Stegodon Zadansky. It lived in the early Pleistocene about 2 million years ago. The largest stegodont ever known from China. It has a shoulder height up to 3.81 meters, and its death age was estimated to be over 60. It was made in a Chinese elementary textbook telling the story of the unfortunate trap in sand and mud when drinking water at Riverside being buried to form a complete skeleton and finally unearthed by scientists. <laughs> The trunk of an elephant. The elephant trunk is a special organ. It's composed of muscles, vessels, nerves, and fat, along with connective tissue, skin, but no bone. The trunk evolved from fused muscles of nose, upper lip, and cheeks. The trunk is long and flexible, consisting of approximately 150,000 muscles. An elephant's trunk is almost as capable as a human's hand, and yet it is remarkably strong. The functions of the trunk include breathing, feeding, watering, dusting, smelling, communicating by touching and making sound, defense, and others. The trunk can handle such a delicate job as picking up a single seed. You ever feed an elephant a grape? It's pretty cool. Anatomy of the cranium by an Asian elephant. The two nostrils separated by a membranous septum. Radial muscles look like bicycle spokes. Longitudinal muscles, thick but sensitive skin. The trunk is mainly used to gather food and convey it to the mouth. Here's some of their teeth. <sighs> Distribution map of proboscideans in China. Until modern uh, times, you had elephants all the way into Beijing, but quickly driven out, I think, by man. Gomphotherids. Platybelodon Grange Granger. Family tree of the uh, Elaphus Laxodonta. <laughs> That's my March of the Elephant's trumpet. Charge! That's what it would sound like if I commanded a fleet of elephants. Denotes mammals, denotes Asian. my Asian heralding, Asian mammal heralding, Cenozoic archaic mammals, primitive groups without living members. The end Mesozoic extinction of dinosaurs provided an extensive living space for mammals. They diversified rapidly into different lineages, which include not only ancestral forms of modern groups, for example, primitive members of Rodentia, primates, etc., but many extinct groups distantly related to extant forms, including Anna Galida, Pantodonta, Condylarthra, Dinocerata, and Mesonychia. Among these extinct groups, some were endemic to China or Asia, whereas some were widely distributed in the northern hemisphere, containing the largest land mammal of their time. These primitive mammals all lived in the early Cenozoic or Paleogene, but did not belong to a, group, a natural group. 
but scientists often call them Cenozoic archaic mammals for the sake of convenience. Hmm. Exclusively Asian mammals, the Anagalita is a mammal group known exclusively from Asia. They were found mainly from the Paleocene deposits of China and Mongolia, but survived into the early Oligocene. Three mammals are recognized in Anagalita, Anagalita, Pseudodictopedia, and Astigalata. Astigalata. Pantodonta, an herbivorous group with wide distribution. Panadonta is an herbivorous group of mammals which lived in the early Paleocene through the Middle, I Middle Eocene. They are found in Asia, North America, Europe, and even South America. Panadonta includes some of the largest mammals of their time, the largest over 500 kilogram in weight. For example, hyperchoreophodon. Choreophodonted pantodonts had a wide distribution in Asia, North America, and Europe, with fossils found from the Canadian Arctic to South China. What is this guy? What do you think? Most primitive pantodont in the world. Name of Bemalabimda. Dinocerata, terrible horns, is a group of hoofed rhino like plant eating mammals. Lived from late Pleiocene, Paleocene. Through Middle Eocene, they are usually unusual for bearing paired horns on the skull, which well explain their name. Their fossils were only found in Asia and North America, with the Untatherium being the most famous member, which has three pairs of horns on nasals, maxillae, and parietals, respectively. Weird looking. He's silly looking. A silly looking Untatherium. Ointatherium. Ointatherium? I wonder if they found them in the, in the Uinta Mountains. They found them in the Uinta Mountains, huh? Ointatherium. Out west. I've been to the Uinta Mountains. Mesoonchia, middle claws. But these are Asian, so probably not. Mesoonchia, middle claws, is a group of hoofed carnivore, carnivorous mammals which lived from the early Paleocene through early Oligocene with fossils found in Asia, North America, and Europe. Unlike other terrestrial carnivorous mammals with sharp claws, Mesonicians have hooves at digital ends and thus are called carnivorous ungulates. They were hunters on land and were thought to be closely related to whales, but recent studies suggest whales are closer in affinity to arteriodactyls. <laughs> Fairies of the dinosaur age, Mesozoic mammals. About 220 million years ago, mammals first appeared on Earth, contemporary with dinosaurs. They were not the dominant group of the terrestrial ecosystem, but still diversified, but still diversified in a number of groups, which include Cyanoconodonts, Morganoconodonts, Docodonts, Triconodonts, Multituberculates, Symmetrodonts, Metatherians, and Eutherians. During the two thirds of their entire evolutionary history, circa 150 million years ago, the Mesozoic mammals derived a series of features at different stages, bodies covered by hair, which help maintain a constant temperature, warm-blooded, giving birth to live young, except monotremes, and nursing their baby, brain well-developed, and hearing ability enhanced with three ear ossicles in the middle ear, chewing function, shearing plus grinding, formed for better processing of food. The evolution of mammals in the Mesozoic prepared the ground for their flourishing after the end of the Cretaceous mass extinction around 66 million years ago. Multituberculates, they gain the name for having a number of tubercules, tuber, tubercles, a number of tubercles in rows on both upper and lower cheeks, they are herbivorous and omnivorous. The first upper and lower incisors of the multituberculates are enlarged, like in rats, so they are called the Mesozoic rodents. Multituberculates are the only mammalian group besides three extant major groups that survived the end Mesozoic mass extinction though they disappeared in the early Eocene 50 million years ago. 
Metatherians and Eutherians. Metatheria and Eutheria are two most advanced mammalian groups, including extant marsupials and placentals, respectively. They diverged late in the Jurassic or early Cretaceous with characteristics such as viviparity and molars with chewing, shearing, plus grinding. Chewing. Chewing is shearing plus grinding function. Okay. After the end, Mesozoic mass extinction, marsupials and placentals rapidly diversified and flourished and became dominant in the Cenozoic terrestrial ecosystem. The origin of mammals was sometimes said, blah, 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 Triassic, blah, 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 survived the extinction of the Cretaceous. Most primitive mammals, early Jurassic, Sinocodon, Yunnan province, resemble modern trees in their size and range, and probably in being insectivorous, laid eggs unlike modern mammals. They generally had more than one bone in the lower jaw. However, they also had some familiar mammalian characteristics, such as teeth that were differentiated into multiple types, and they were probably warm-blooded and covered in hair. The first mammals were unimpressive compared to the dinosaurs, but they were a novel form of vertebrate with adaptations that would eventually lead to great evolutionary success. That's right. Because mammals have survived intact, okay? When the dinosaurs could not handle it, it was too hot. Uh, you need to get out the kitchen, okay? If it's too hot, you need to get out the kitchen. That's what I'm going to say. That's what I'm about to say. The te cheek teeth of an elephant are not replaced by new ones emerging from the jaws vertically as in most mammals. Instead, new teeth grow at the back of the mouth and move forward to push out the old ones like a conveyor belt. But in the primitive proboscideans, the cheek teeth were still replaced vertically. In subadult and adult elephants, only one or two teeth in each half of the jaw are in use at any given time. Huh. The first set of... The first set of chewing tooth wears out when the elephant's two or three years old. The second set, four to six years old. The third set, nine to 15 years old. Fourth set, 18 to 28 years old. Fifth set of cheek teeth last until the elephant is, liter is in its early 40s and the sixth and usually final set will become the only tooth in use. Tooth eruption in age class is an African savanna elephant. When your teeth is gone, you about to have some problems because you can't be eating no food no more. The tusks of an elephant, primitive proboscideans, had both upper and lower incisors, but in the advanced forms, only the upper second incisor remained, which evolved into tusks. The tusks have no roof and continue to grow for most of the elephant's life. An African elephant, the longest tusk can reach 3.264 meters long. The longest fossil tusk is 5 meters, and the heaviest one weighs 102.7 kilograms. Tusk number, configuration, shape, and length can be helpful in identifying elephants, a pattern in tusk of crisscross lines or Schrieger lines forming small diamond shaped areas is seen in cross section and the angle of the diagonals can be used as an indicator in ivory identification. In mammoth it is less than 90 degrees but in extant elephants it's greater than 115 degrees. Functions attributed to tusks include food gathering, defense, offense and display. primitive member of the Simogontans. Adaptive diversification of proboscideans. Proboscideans in the Ethiopian realm invaded into and dispersed throughout the Holo-Arctic realm during the Mi early Miocene. They are previously called the Macedons, named from the mastoid structure of their cheek teeth. In the early Miocene, Macedons have separated into Bonodont, Gomphotheriidae, and Zogodont, Mammotidae. Mammotids were not very diverse, but the famous American Macedon was its terminal representative in the late Pleistocene. Gomphotheres were very diverse. They are usually divided into Coerolophodentinae, Amabelidinae, Gomphotherinae from Tetralophodont, Gomphotheres, Stegodontidae, and Elephantidae were derived.
Extinct Shovel Tuskers. I already did all this, my last video. So that's it, I think I'm done. There might be some stuff downstairs I didn't see. Go check it out. Punk line of stuff, the prosa deny, huh? Than it is to a black and white giant panda there. I think they're cuter. I like the red panda better than the giant black pandas. Every time I go to a zoo, I'm like, these giant pandas are boring and not doing nothing, and little red pandas. Some systematicists consider that it's only a highly specialized bear and should be classified with the Ursidae, for which the discovery of the Olera arctis once thought to be a type of Ursavis, presented strong and cogent fossil evidence. Hmm. Is that the polar bear? Olero arctis? In order to digest the bamboo effectively, the giant panda successfully develops a series of adapt- I'm in the uh, upstairs area here of the museum when we're talking about mammals, giant panda and other bears. The giant panda is quite special among carnivora due to its distinct habits of feeding on bamboo. It's been therefore either classified as a separate family for a long time or regarded as a close relative of the red panda or raccoon. However, some of the features such as false thumbs which enable panda to grasp the bamboo, reduced carnassials and square-built molars, Olero arctis demonstrates similar teeth and is therefore considered as an ancestral form of the giant panda. With the exception of the giant panda, other ursids are mainly Omnivorous, except the polar bear and include brown bear, black bear, sloth bear, and their allies. They widely distribute across Eurasia and America, even dispersed to Africa in geologic age. Let's see. Ancestral carnivores, procidentae, ursidentae. So you have brown bear, polar bear, Asiatic black bear, American black bear, sun bear, sloth bear, spectacled bear. Giant panda, raccoon, and lesser panda. The red panda, the lesser panda, is more closely related to a raccoon skull.